Hey guys, it's JH. Welcome to the practice tee. It's a very windy practice tee today. And I'm, a, I'm very disorganized today. I'm trying to do stuff in between uh, rain showers. Okay guys, what I want to just do first up today is just a little bit of an addition to the short control acceleration swing. Okay, the what what the major um, facet of of the short control acceleration swing comes down to is the trail arm control mechanism and that is what I feel myself is that I just grab hold of the golf club with the right hand or the trail hand and I just pull those fingers back against that that forearm I just pull them back which takes the handle and clearly takes takes the left wrist into that position here It's like I'm setting up my trail hand, or in my case, my right hand, for a slap. If I was going to slap something, I wouldn't do that, would I? I'd go, whoosh. I'd, I'd set, the, I'd set the, the palm against the wrist, or the hand against the wrist, and I'd go like that. And to generate the most power, you've got to hold that slap position as long as you can, clearly. Now I think it's easier to hold that type of, of angular retention in a hinge action than it is in a cock action. When you've got a cock action going here, I, I've always found it very, very difficult to keep this hand back at that angle. But at that angle, it's very, very easy in my, from my physical my physical application point of view. It's easy to do that, hard to to do that. I find it tough to do to do that, but I can do that easy. Now we see the Dustin Johnsons and the you know the Tom Laymans and the guys that actually hinge it like that and get bowed at the top. They may take it away in this fashion here, but then they go into a hinge and they get this position here. You can't bow your wrist, guys, if you just cock it. You've got to hinge it to a degree. Now, I'm not saying look for a bow in your wrist at all. But I feel that. And I haven't got that much in mind at all. But I feel that as a feeling. Now, I'm just going back to my old audio, guys, and those walk around ones out here don't work because we're right under the aircraft flight path and they've got all the microwave, you know, uh, uh, landing signals coming out and it just affects the walk arounds. But for this, these are not on a frequency so it doesn't affect them. Okay, so what have we got to do? Well, primarily, we just grab it with that trail hand, and we just cock that wrist back here. Don't take it back very far, just keep the connection. Keep the connection in the arms here, take it back here. We're gonna go slap, slap. A little bit like, you know that Lee Como guy from, uh, from Texas that's got that amazing swing, the power swing? He said he just slaps the ball. He bicep curls. He takes it back here and he bicep curls at the same time. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's good. That'll actually give you, you know, a real good compression loading of that of that forearm against the bicep if you can do that. I think that's good. So I just wanted to make clear that this very simplistic guys. All it is is, is basically we're just going to. It really is trail side hand arm dominant. It's almost like I feel like this is the golf swing. Here, just hold that. Bang. 
The left hand is my radius lock, or the lead hand is the radius lock, and the trail hand is the power applicator. And the more power I get, comes from holding that, that hinge back there against that forearm. If I had elastic bands around my fingers and tied to the back of my forearm here, that's the feeling I have coming in. And I don't want that tension to go out. It clearly comes in because you get to the point of no return here and it just unloads and explodes. But I feel that it doesn't. Clearly it does. But I've always had trouble my whole life in, in trying to hold back a wrist cock of this nature. I always feel like the left hand is just trying to get away and the right wrist is not is not in the right place. But here, that action there is, is very, very, very simplistic. So is it handsy feeling? Yeah, it is handsy feeling. Or it is hand feeling. It's trail hand feel. Just feel that really what I feel guys I just feel that trail hand come into to operation I mean that's really all it is the trail hand just cocks the club holds the club and of course the other ingredient for me is that if I'm holding this here I want to feel like my nose is outside my right foot a la Mo Norman a la Lee Trevino which I'm going to do a little bit on after this video because if, you, if you're here, if you're in this orientation here, very easy to keep that angle. The head comes up or rolls towards the target. It's very difficult to hold that angle. I find that when this right shoulder is back and crowding my right, my right, um, my right wrist hinge angle, when that this this whole quadrant here is is sort of corralling that, it's easy to hold that angle. If I come in here and I roll out of it, I feel that wants to escape. So we don't want to do that. Okay guys, so we'll just hit a couple of shots, haven't hit any today. So we've got a little bit of blue sky here, but there's a lot of rain out there. And we're going to get some very, very significant rain in the next <laughs> few days. Basically like we got a week ago where we had right here 1200 mil in 36 hours. That's a lot. I think 100 mil is... what? Um, It's lots in, in inches. Okay guys, so what I'm basically trying to do, I'm going to trying to get here, stay connected, come back here, hold that here. Pivot fire. One of the guys uh, called me all the way from the US the other morning at 1.30 in the morning. I was up, uh, as I always am. But and he said, you know, so I'm getting a little drag. I'm coming in here and I'm dragging it. I said, yeah, but that's because you're firing the hand as an independent agent. Hold onto it and let the pivot fire. You'll feel like this action. That doesn't happen because we get rollover, we get release, but it will feel like that. Okay, guys, we'll just hit a couple. Now, a lot of people have said that it's not much shorter than my normal swing. Well, it may not be in look, but it feels significantly shorter. And it feels like it's just this. Bang. I'm going back and I'm loading against it. And that point that I made before, guys, is the shorter the swing, the less propensity there is for it getting out of the of the swing slot. Because it's not going far enough. And it's not coming from here and having a chance to wave all over the place. It's not doing that. It just doesn't do that. If it's here, it basically can't go anywhere. It's captive. Okay? So the short controlled acceleration. Now guys, first hit of the day, look at this angle, look. Now that's a very tight swing. I've had a really solid workout this morning and I'm still super tight. Very, very tight. But the good thing is, I don't need to be loose with this golf swing because I'm not looking for a big range of motion at all. I'm not looking for that. See if I can get square onto the camera today. Look guys, I've still got the angle. It's just like a little forearm jolt. Now if you can incorporate good tempo in this as well, I'm always very abrupt. 
and very jolty. You know, mine, mine's like not, not a swing, it's a jolt. But if you've got better tempo, you don't have to swing as fast as JH. You don't have to do that, that's just my tempo. If you can just put a nice tempo on the, um, on the shot, that's great. Now guys, we're over here in the, the cow paddock again, the and after all the rain, the rough's like three inches long. And this is, I say, this is crab grass. We call it grab grass, because it just grabs the golf. But it makes you strong. Okay, so we're just going to take it back here. That's what, the swing actually feels like this. It doesn't feel like it goes any further than that. Now I see on the video that my arm gets parallel with the ground. The club's back here. And what I notice with the driver is how much load I'm getting on the driver. I'm getting a huge amount of bend. Now that's an X-Flex shaft in that uh, Alpha driver that I use there. And it's just bending like a piece of macaroni off a very, very short base. So that, guys, that tells you that you can have a short swing and get great storage and get plenty of distance. I've picked up distance. I've picked up nearly a club with mines and I've picked up about probably 12, 13 metres in the air with my driver, sometimes more. So, yeah, so we're going to just take it back and just jolt it. I feel like it's that. I'm taking the club back and I'm turning against it while I'm taking it back. Look at this guy, look, 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 look. The body's very still. It's just all arms, arms and hands, against a very, very quiet body. The good thing about that is we don't have all these rotational factors, rotational factors of, of excess to coordinate. I'm just basically standing still, taking my, my uh, trail hand back and smashing the living daylights out of the ball. Now, there's more going on than that, but it feels like that. I mean, that's just gone absolutely miles. Okay. Keep the head back. Now, I feel that my left shoulder's hardly even moving. It's so strong, we've got a really hard knockdown left to right wind here. Very hard. And the ball's not moving, not moving at all. Very strong, it might be picking up on the mic. Probably about, yeah, 35, 40 Ks. Okay, so I'll try and do a bit better tempo. Now what it does, guys, is by firing that trail arm, or that trail hand, it really does give you a lot of arm extension towards the target. Now when I hit some shots this way, you'll clearly see that I still get left of the line release of the golf club. That just happens automatically. In any golf swing, you won't get that. If you do, you won't hit it very good. Everybody that's ever played golf has always released the club. Even Mo Norman, even though he says he does that, Trevino does this, and Trevino says I keep it on the, on the ball like that. They don't, but they think they do. So it's a perception, it's not a reality. Okay, so really see this one, JH? That's a beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. Now that's a little golf swing. A very little golf swing. Now I'll come back in a moment and I'll hit some shots down range because I want to uh, just set the, car the camera up. That fence is only about you know, 15, 16 feet away here. But I'm going to, I think with that, those clouds out there, I'll put the camera down on a very low tripod so you can see the ball fly. Okay, we'll just hit a couple more. Just hit a couple of four irons, guys. A couple of four irons. You really hold it, JH. such good I don't know if this mic picks up the impact it probably doesn't because it's got the wind sock on it. but that is just such good impact out of this grass I mean it's just the crab grass is terrible I mean I'll just let all that grass behind the ball there and I don't care I'll just blast it out of there I mean that's an absolute bullet 
That's going two iron distance, almost hybrid distance. Just hit a couple of uh, drivers. Just want to show you guys that the feeling is, is the same for a driver as it is for a wedge. And I honestly get that feeling. just unbelievable. You feel like you're on the ball forever. You feel like you're there. And then you look up and then the ball's just sailing off into the blue. Or today, the grey. But I mean, that's just absolutely fantastic. And the swing doesn't feel, guys, I promise you, doesn't feel any different to a wedge. And you watch the bend on this shaft. Arms only getting to here, clubs getting to here, but we're getting lots of load on. I never thought at my age that I'd ever be able to get that type of flight and contact and distance again. And that's just as good as I've ever hit it in my life. Really, that's as good as I've ever hit it, ever. Absolutely as good a distance. One more. See how that shaft is loading, guys? So if you think you can't get speed, wrong. So it's just a little forearm jolt. So that's bowling alley stuff. That's just going straight down the same line as the other one. Okay guys, I'll just quit here and then I'll set the camera up with a very low tripod and we'll hit some down range and give you a look at some ball flight. You've got to see the ball flight to understand and you've got to see this action here, side on, and where I'm loading and all that type of stuff. So I'll be back. 